Good evening and many thanks for joining us to News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amayu. We begin now with the report that President Muhammad Buhari has appointed a former Senate Minority Leader Gotu Lakwabiu as the National Coordinator of the Presidential Support Committee. The Akwa Ibom State Coordinator of the Committee, Umfo Okon, who disclosed this in Uyo, said four indigenous of the state have also been appointed into the committee. Okon said appointments were a reflection of the confidence President Buhari, Buhari reposed on the ability to successfully work for his re-election in the forthcoming presidential election. He therefore called on the people of the state to fully key into the national politics by supporting the All Progressives Congress APC to return the president and ensure that the party wins Akwa Ibom State in 2019. And on the 2019 budget, the federal government has chided the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, over his comments on the 2019 budget proposal of President Muhammad Buhari. Presidential spokesman Femi Adeshino, who disclosed this in a statement, said Atiku identified the current realities but offered no substantive and workable solution. You recall that Atiku had last weekend issued a statement in which he described Buhari's 2019 budget proposal as fundamentally flawed and failing to address current realities. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has unveiled his plan to halt the escalating banditry in Zamfara State. Atiku, who made the promise today, said within the first 30 days of his swearing in as president in 2019, he would send a combined detachment of 30,000 military and police personnel to flush out the bandits. He slammed President Muhammad Buhari for deploying a huge number of security operatives to Oshun and Ikiti State to wrestle power for his political party, but blamed him for his inability to secure the lives and properties of Zamfarans. I assure you that if you, the good people of Zamfara, elect me as your president on February 16, 2019, within a month of my swearing in, I will send a combined force of 30,000 soldiers and policemen to stay in Zamfara, to make sure that the bandits that you see today, you will see no more. When elections took place in Ekiti and Oshun states, President Buhari sent 30,000 policemen and soldiers there. I'm assuring you that it is more important for me, Atiku Abubakar, to secure your lives and property than it is for me to secure political power for my party. And now still on the Zamfara killings, with its upsurge of banditry in Zamfara state, the Save Nigeria Coalition of Patriots has accused Governor Abdulaziz Yari as the one allegedly behind the crisis. Governor, convener of the group, Yusuf Umshilaza, who disclosed this to journalist Nabuja, said the recent spate of killings in northwestern state is politically motivated. Save Zamfara state has metamorphosed into a killing field whose unknown killers are now on rampage. We of course acknowledge that the state in the past had occasional incidents of cattle rustling and robberies like any other part of the country or even other countries of the world. But the state graduating to banditry on an industrial scale was quite a surprise. But information at our disposal has pointed out that the upsurge in killings in Zamfara have everything to do with the 2019 general elections. There is no point dilly darling about what we have found out. The upsurge in banditry is politically masterminded by the Zamfara state governor, Abdelaziz Yari, because the governor unfortunately is supported by some all progressive Congress members in his camp. These elements who lost out in the primaries are embittered that they are unable to get tickets as candidates. It is no coincidence that bandits have gone on killing spree since they lost out. The group also appealed to the international community to call the governor and his associates in the All Progressive Congress APC to order before it is too late. We urge the federal government to step into the situation before it gets out of hand. While the state governor presently enjoys immunity, his aides that do not enjoy immunity and found to be complicit in the banditry-related killings in the state must be shown the full wrath of the law 
Again, we warn that we must not have another Boko Haram in the country before steps are taken to bring those behind the carnage in Zamfara to book. We appeal to the international community to call Governor Yari and his associates in the APC to order before it is too late. They must impress it on the federal government that it owes the responsibility of providing security to citizens and that it must live up to this task. The federal government must not allow consideration for their APC membership to slow down the law from running its full course. Police personnel have invaded the residence of the lawmaker representing Kugi West in the National Assembly, Senator Dino Milai. The invasion of the lawmaker's Abuja residence, located at 11 Sanga Street off Mississippi Matama, took place today. Milai had raised the alarm a few days ago over an attempt by the federal government to assassinate him. And now on the 2019 election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says some politicians in your state are mounting pressure on the commission to sell unclaimed 914,529 permanent voter cards in its custody to them. The commission said it is not giving into such pressure aimed at rigging the forthcoming polls, adding that INEC is determined to ensure that people's votes count in the free, fair and credible elections in 2019. The commission also assured residents of the state of smooth elections devoid of crisis in 2019, stressing that no worker of the commission would sell PVCs to any politician ahead of the elections. And now in Ekiti politics, the Ekiti state governor Kayo De Fayami has inaugurated coordinating directors who will oversee the affairs of the local government in the state. The governor's decision followed the recent suspension of the 16 elected council chairmen and 177 councillors by the State House of Assembly. You recall that the 16 council chairmen, who are all members of the People's Democratic Party, had in October filed what looked like an anticipatory suit seeking an order to restrain Governor Kayode Fayemi from removing them from office. But the suit was struck out by an Adoikiti High Court on November 2nd. And now on celebrating marriage, couples in Nigeria have been encouraged to create more time for themselves and their families. This advice was given at the fourth edition of the Christ Embassy Couples Hangout. Super Screens in Kuruka Ibe now reports. It was an atmosphere of fun at Christ Embassy as the church brought together couples to celebrate them. Expectedly, the couples were glamorously dressed and ready to ease themselves off the work stress with light music at the background. According to the organizers of the event tagged Couples Hangout, it was an avenue for couples to connect and share the joy of the festivities. They were also advised to listen more to each other and make God the bedrock of their house. Let the Holy Spirit be the captain of the relationship. Let it take charge. Before you take any action, hear from the Holy Ghost. Let him tell you, do this, do it this way, don't do this. Let it be this way. And before you know what's happening, things will just be moving on fine in your relationship. Praise the Lord. Speaking to Superscreen, some of the couples expressed joy over the initiative, sharing the lessons they have learned and how they will implement it in their different homes. Similarly, the winner of the couples game which entails a weekend trip in a church resort in the country could not contain her joy. You should always be sensitive to the issues in in your marriage, sensitive to make corrections, sensitive to to be better, to be you know to be a better husband and to be a better wife. You know it's fun. It makes us just laugh over some things which we've gone through and we've corrected, and it's really fun. In any uh, marriage, there should be uh, proper communication between the husband and the wife. That's the, that, I think that's the, one of the most important things that make the marriage work, that make the marriage be blissful. You should be able to manage your, your, your temperament. At no matter what, if your husband says do this, even if you don't like it, listen to him, he's your husband, do what he wants. And if it sees that that's what he has taught, told you to do and 
maybe it doesn't really fit the way you really want it he could ask you to do the other way around but don't argue with your husband don't don't talk cruelly to your husband and then something i also learned today about your children how you care for your children how you bring up your children in the right way they should go we should imbibe in them the things of god so when they leave home that's we also pull them through life communication is key you have to learn to communicate. There's a way to communicate. There's a way you pass your, your message. There's a way I may want him to do something that he may not even see that direction. Learn to have time where you just just relate and just be happy. Always have that family time. It's key to any beautiful home. I know I kept praying. I said, God, I don't know. It might just be a shocker because could it be a deliberate act that number one was not called? To be frank, I enjoyed every bit. Apart from the winning aspects, I learned so much, especially from the facilitators that came. In a country like Nigeria, where everyone is busy making ends meet and forgetting the real essence of life, marriage and love, events and gatherings like this should be encouraged to help couples bond better for a better society. Nkiruka Ibe, Superscreen, TV News. In another story now, a suspect arrested for allegedly killing former Chief of Defense Staff M. Chief Marshal Alex Bade, retired, has revealed why the general was killed. 25-year-old tribe rabble, while being interrogated by police, said Bade was killed in an attack to rob him of money meant for the purchase of a new farmland. Meanwhile, the police on Thursday, during a press conference at the force headquarters in Abuja, postponed the parade of five suspects arrested in connection the mother of the former CDS. The Arnold City FM 105.5 praise in the City Musical Concert has held in Lagos State. The event, which attracted a large number of Nigerians, had in attendance several gospel, several gospel music artists. Super Screen's Blessed Omonose tells us more in this report. As the year comes to an end, the need to offer praises to God in an act of appreciation cannot be overemphasized. Looking back into the year with its high and low points, these Nigerians trooped out in their numbers to render praises and gratitude to God for a successful year at the annual CTFM musical concert tagged Praise in the City. <laughs> to Super Screen Television, these performing gospel artists express their views and expectations about the event. The experience was wow, wow, wow. Well, bless God. This is a very wonderful one. This is awesome. And I, uh, and I hope to see more, 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 more of this. And if they can put up some other things, I don't mind. It's going to be good. It's a blast. That's the first word that just came to my mind. It is a blast because I mean, and the caption there, you don't have to pay to praise. It's a good caption because other people would organize it. Some people might put a gate fee. 
some people might put something everybody can afford. But City FM says no. Ours is different. You don't need to pay to pray. I'm, I'm excited that it's happening here. You know, most of the things happen on the island. Nothing really happens on the mainland. So kudos to um, City of Praise, City FM and stuff for putting this together. It's amazing. It's super amazing that we're gathering people. Instead of them messing around, drinking and putting themselves in the place of harm, they are here worshiping and praising and dancing and enjoying themselves. A day like this is a, is a memorable day and it's a day, um, it's something to, to, to remember for a very, very long time. So I'm just honored to be part of it. The, the energy is real. The gratitude and the atmosphere is, is there for everyone to see. Everyone is grateful to God for the year and um, I mean, kudos and big ups to the organizers. They've really done amazing work. Speaking on the rationale behind the event, Alan Adedoja, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of CT 105.1 FM, says it is an avenue to offer sacrifice of praise to God. Praise in the city is a sacrifice of praise, a yearly sacrifice of praise to the Almighty God. God deserves all the praise. And we in City FM put God first in everything that we do. And because we do that, we want to show the old Lagos, invite the old Lagos to come join us in praising the Most High God. God came down and God is still here receiving the praise of his people. That is what I can say. The atmosphere is charged with his glory. It is only a fool who would not praise God. The Bible says, I let everything that has breath praise God. So we owe it to him. Not for the fact that we, we are breathing. We owe it to God to give him praise. The fourth annual CTF in praise in the city has come and gone. But memories of the event will continue to linger in the minds of everyone that attended. Blessed Amonese, reporting for Super Screen News. We'll take a quick break now, and when we return, we'll bring you business stories. Just stay with us. Welcome back if you're just joining us. This is Super Screen News at 6. Moving on now to business stories. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has injected $210 million into the interbank sector of the foreign exchange market, the wholesale segment, and other sectors of the market. The Director of Corporate Communications Department, CBN, Isaac Okorafo, said the forex interventions in the, is a continuation of the Apex Bank's resolved aimed at sustaining a high level of stability in the forex market and continually ease access to the currency by customers in the different sectors. While loading actors in various sectors of the forex market for the level of stability in spite of the activities of the speculators, Okorafo assured that CBN is ready to play its interventionist role in the market. And now in the past sector, the federal government plans the federal government plans to realize the sale of Afan Power PLC and Yola Electricity Distribution Company in the first quarter of 2019. Head of Public Communications Amina Othman, who disclosed this, said the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE, had in September confirmed that at the moment, at the close of the submission of bids for the expression of interest for the two power companies, seven firms submitted bids to buy Afan, while 12 submitted for Yola Disco. You will recall that the BPE had in September constituted an inter-ministerial committee for the screening of prospective investors who had expressed interest in the acquisition of 60% stakes in the two companies. And on infrastructure development, the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing has proposed 441.559 billion naira in the 2019 budget with 408 billion naira earmarked for capital projects. The 8.826 trillion naira budget proposal document prepared by the Ministry of Budget and National Planning shows that the federal government will spend 3.453 trillion naira on personnel, another 3.359 trillion naira on overhead amount, 
to a total recurrent expenditure of 6.794 trillion naira. For the tripartite ministry under Babatunde Fashola, 33.530 billion naira is for recurrent, while 408 billion naira is for capital expenditure. The ministry, which allocated 13 billion naira to TCN, will be spending another 5.181 billion naira as counterpart financing for the over 1 billion naira loans being processed to expanding transmission infrastructure. We we'll take another quick break now and we'll return with stories from the international scene and sports. Stay with us. Welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us now on the international scene. Saudi Arabia's King Salman has appointed a new foreign minister as part of a major cabinet reshuffle. A royal decree demoted outgoing chief diplomat Adel Adjubey to the position of Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and named Ibrahim al Assaf as his replacement. The shake-up is the first since the October 2 killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Kingdom's consulate in the Turkish city of Istanbul by a Saudi hit squad. The murder, as well as the Saudi government's shifting narratives, sparked international outrage and jeopardized Riyadh's relations with its Western allies. And on Syria war, Turkey has sent reinforcements to its borders with Syria, including mounted pickup trucks and weaponry. The heightened military activity comes days after President Tayyip Erdogan said Turkey would postpone a planned military